name is Tanner Pril. I'm a vSAN specialist at ZE for VMware. Today I'm going to talk about stretch clustering. With vSAN now we have the capability or the ability to stretch or to replicate data to the other side. Now, first let's start with keeping data on a side. I discussed it in the previous session. If we have one VM, we could attach a policy to it. And with vSAN we have a very granular approach to how to do storage or how this VM should use data underneath. Now, an FTT, so the failures to tolerate, I would use one. I would use a method of RAID 1 and I would do it not stretched. Not stretched means that this VM now becomes an object and this object has been split into different components and these components are now distributed over the different hosts. Now, no rocket science here, not at all. Now, let's see what if I would introduce a second site. This will not change, but potentially a other VM will use the stretch cluster. Now, let's make a second data center. Let's draw one. Now we have four hosts on each side, and now we can go back to our first site or whatever, and we can have a VM. I will draw it here, a VM here. This VM now, I will create a new policy, I will attach a new policy to this VM. Now, this VM has a FTT of one, same, a FTM rate one, same, but what we would do is we would stretch it. What I mean with I would stretch it is I would like to have the same data that I use here, that I have here, I would like to have on this side. Now, go back to this VM, this VM now becomes an object and this object has been distributed on this side. Now, as I said here, I would like to have it stretched. And if I would like to have it stretched, this means that the data needs to go to the other side, right? Now, we have a stretched cluster, but we would like to comply with those rules as well. Why? If this side fails, we want to have the same copies on this side. Now, FTT of 1 means that I come here and I have I need to distribute my data again over those different hosts. Now, if one thing fails, there is no issue. Well, no issue. I still have one piece missing. I have a missing link here, and that missing link would be a witness. And that witness is there. That witness is there to be the referee when one of those fail. So if this one fails, there is a majority of sites that survives. It will survive one site. If the other site fails, it would survive whatever site is still alive. Now, also if, the, if this witness fails, this just keeps on, on going. Right? Now, there are a couple of minimas and maximas to this. We should have a five millisecond round trip time to, between those two sites, so that the, everything that has been written here has been acknowledged to your VM knowing that this has been written, so this is an important one. And we have also a link, we need a link from the different sites to each other, right? So that this one is also in the game to basically be the referee between sites. Now, if you look at how the data would, would be distributed, this one would just be components on the site, and this one would, for example, so this components on the site and a witness on that side, to back up site failure. So if we have a component failure or maintenance on this side, it would all be done here. But also a good thing, and the granularity now plays with vSAN, if we have this VM and it's not stretched, potentially it has a VM on the other side and it's been replicated from an application point of view. With vSAN we don't limit you 
the choice. We give you the choice. We give you the opportunity to use storage replication, but we also give you the, the possibility to use whatever replication or let's say full tolerancy you would like to build into your processes. So with that, I hope to have informed you about stretch clustering and the basis around stretch clustering. Hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.